Patients who have pituitary diseases often have a hard time finding information because these diseases are fairly uncommon. Both the diagnosis and therapy is constantly evolving. The pituitary gland is the master gland. It sits in the center of the base of the skull, right underneath the optic apparatus, in between the carotid arteries. This pituitary gland secretes a number of hormones and controls all other glands in the body. There are multiple diseases that can happen in that area. The most common one is something called adenoma, which is a benign pituitary tumor. And it can cause symptoms by growing and displacing the structures and causing headaches, visual loss, dysfunction of the pituitary gland or it can cause symptoms by secreting hormones and producing typical symptoms like acromegaly, Cushing's disease, or prolactinomas. In the pituitary center, we take care of patients who have numerous types of pituitary diseases. Patients may have disorders that affect their heart or their bones or many other systems. These patients often require medical therapy, surgical therapy, radiation therapy. So these require kind of multidisciplinary approaches, which is why we created the pituitary center. Most centers don't do this. And so patients need to see one specialist, get referred to another. This can take both time, energy, and may have an emotional cost. We try to offer that all at one time and in one space so that we can give a final opinion at one time. Patients may need urgent surgery or at least surgery in the near future. So it's critical that I work closely with a neurosurgeon. For pituitary tumors, it's about whether medical treatment or surgical treatment is indicated. So we do an endonasal approach, so we do a transcranial approach, so we do a minimally invasive transcranial approach with the endoscope, without the endoscope. All those are options that we can choose for our patients. I think as a surgeon, the most important thing is that you understand well the surgical anatomy. The anatomy is the roadmap to access the base of the skull, the brain, and understanding that very complex three-dimensional anatomy is extremely important for the surgeon. But in the case of endoscopic endonasal surgery, the number of patients you operate and your experience is extremely important because it correlates directly with outcome. The recovery is usually faster, there is less risk of stroke, less risk of injuring the brain or the cranial nerves, and that is the real factor that uh, is important here. What I like about working at Stanford is the entrepreneurial spirit that brings a cooperative approach in a multidisciplinary way to approach patient care. We use combinations of specialists involving ENT and neurosurgery because we have found that when both an ENT and neurosurgeon work together, there are better patient outcomes, both in terms of the outcomes of tumor removal, but also how the patient feels after the surgery and how well they heal. I think at Stanford you find the best of the best. You find the best of the best in every field. Not only on the medical field, but also on the research technology field. We are talking about transformative technologies that are going to be changing healthcare in the future. As a surgeon, you need to have both competence and compassion. Competence is about skill and knowledge. Knowledge is about understanding the anatomy. Skill is about having done many times your operations to become very skillful at it. Compassion is about kindness, it's about love, it's about wanting the best for your patient.